uh, which will be which will be required for our uh, discussion of linear programming problem. I hope that you have understood what I have discussed in the previous session. Now we have already got a hint that why it is called linear because we have to deal with uh, linear problems. So it is these are linear problems. Okay, so it is therefore it is called linear problems. And what is programming? What do you mean by programming? Programming here it actually stands for the it is equivalent to the word optimization. We have to do a kind of optimization uh, problem. We have to do kind of optimization technique to the system to get maximum solution, maximum value of the variable and minimum value of the variable. So this programming and optimization are equivalently being used over here and therefore it is called linear programming problem. So I'm not going to the going into the details of that. Let me talk about some other important part that is required over here. Now, remember one thing, remember that in linear programming problem, we always deal with, you always deal with physical variables. We always deal with physical variables. Okay, what do you mean by physical variables? The variables which directly comes from the system. These are called the physical variables. Say for example, if someone asks me, if someone asks me how many students are right now in your class, I'll say that there are 47 students in my class. How many students are interested in, your, uh, in attending your class? Uh, I'll say that, okay, 30 students are very much interested in attending my class. Somehow I know this. Three students are not actually interested in attending the class. They are only interested in putting attendance. And this, this kind of things, which uh, this kind of numbers you see always uh, are, are positive numbers. Okay, they are physical variables because they directly come from the system. How much money have you paid, paid for your, uh, when you joined in techno for this particular MBA course? What is your age? What is your height? What is your weight? And how many students, uh, how many labors has to be um, brought in so that we can, uh, yes. one, can you eat? I have joined. Yeah, I am saying that in linear programming problem, we'll always deal with physical variables. The variables which directly come from the system and those variables which are always positive variables. Uh, list they can be negative. Say, for example, if I say that how many participants uh, need to be present, how many, how many uh, audience uh, need to be present in a theater so that the th uh, theater owner uh, will start the movie to show. So, I, I, so far as I knew, long time ago, the number used to be in Highland Park, uh, Metropolis Mall, the number used to be six, minimum six participants need to be present in the theater for the movie to start. If the number is less than six, they will not start the show and they cancel the show. So in every physical system, we, all, we are always interested about numbers, number of that, number of these, number of those like this. And these numbers cannot be negative. I, I cannot say how many, how many, so, uh, yes. So physical variable, uh, it doesn't mean that physical variable is kind of a number, just a number, not only, not other uh, else. Physical variables can actually, physical variables can have, can be a negative, uh, very, some sort of variables which can consider negative values also. But I'm talking from the perspective of linear programming problem. Physical variables say for X. I'm saying that X persons are required to do the job. Okay, so X persons are required to do the job or X materials should be, X computers should be uh, bought to, to uh, maintain the quality of lab. So these variables from the perspective of linear programming problem, I'm again saying actually physical uh, temperature is also a physical variable, but temperature can be a negative also, but we shall not discuss about temperature over here. We are only concerned in linear programming problem by the grace of God, we are only concerned about physical variables, which are positive. Those physical variables will always be positive. So we will always consider X greater than or equal to zero 
and y greater than or equal to zero. This is a requirement I'm saying, this is a requirement. And this requirement is actually called non-negativity restriction. This requirement is called non-negativity restriction. You have to keep in mind, keep this in mind. This is called the non-negativity restriction. And because of this restriction, what is happening is that, now again, let me draw the straight line that I drew earlier. Our straight line was 2x plus y is equal to four. Okay, and uh, we got 2x by four plus y by four is equal to one. And that is x by two plus y by four is equal to one in the intercept form. And what I did, Previously, in the previous session, what I did, I drew x-axis and y-axis. I marked the point 2, 0 over here. We represent this point by A. And somewhere here, I marked the point B, which is having the coordinate 0, 4. And then I joined. And while I joined them, I said that you can stretch the line. See I'm, I, how terrible the line I'm drawing. Yeah, it is a, not a line, it is a, become a snake. Uh, so <clears throat> I, I beg pardon, okay, it is a line. It, 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 is, it is supposed to be a line. So this particular line, I called you, I asked you to draw it in and you can stretch it further. Okay, and we actually mark the entire region on the upper side and the lower side. But once we restrict, once we restrict the thing by this non-negativity restriction, once I put this non-negativity restriction, the things get things become easier. Then what we need to do, we have to consider the positive quadrant only. For linear programming problem solving, we shall only consider the positive quadrant. So we will mark the point A two zero, and we'll mark the point B zero four and we'll join them by a straight line. We will join them by a straight line. Okay, I hope that this, straight, this, this time it becomes a straight line. Let me select this. Yeah, now it is, yeah, I forgot to use it. Now it's perfect straight line, but I'm not extending this on the either side because of this restriction, because I don't want to move into other quadrants where either X can become negative or Y can become negative or both can become negative. Why? Because this non-negativity restrictions are there in the linear programming problem. Okay, so this is the second part of the thing. After the recap, the first thing that I actually discussed in the previous session was the recap one. And this part that I'm discussing right now is recap two. So you can mention this in your notebook like this. Recap one, this, 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 how to mark region, recap two, this, 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 how to, why should we consider the positive quadrant always? Now recap three. In recap three, we need to discuss something else. First of all, let me ask you, are you familiar with matrix? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, matrix. Yes, sir. What is matrix? Yes, sir. Yeah, you are familiar with matrix. Matrix is an arrangement of row and column. Now suppose I'm giving you I mean, suppose I'm giving a system of equation. Now, previously I gave you only one equation, 2x plus y is equal to four. Okay, now I am giving you a, another equation along with this, x plus y is equal to one. Okay, two equations I'm giving you, and you know that two variables, two unknowns, solution is unique. Unique solution we want, uh, actually we, I mean, expect from this. Now, my question here is not about the solution. My question here is about, can you, can you represent, can you represent this equation? Or rather I must say <clears throat> this system of equation in its matrix form, can you, can you write it in its matrix form? Do you know how to do it? Yes, sir. What do we, what do, uh, we do? 
it's an eigen we collect eigen values and eigen oh, vectors oh, so oh, 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 no, no 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 oh my god don't bring that oh easy. sorry 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 uh, <laughs> two one one uh, one yes one column and equals to four one yeah what we do is that first of all we write it in this manner we first of all write it in in this manner a1 x a1 x b1 y is equal to c1 it is one equation and a2 x b2 y and equals to c2 in this is another equation then what we do is that we mark the coefficients of the variables x and y in both the equations so here the coefficient the first equation this is the first equation and this is the second equation since there are two equations since there are two equations the size of the matrix will be the number of rows in the matrix will be two two rows will be there first row second row okay now how many variables are there that only two variables are there this is one variable and that is another variable so, and therefore number of columns two will be two, two it will be two by two matrix so number of columns will be two and what we do after that we mark the coefficient of the variable x and variable y in the first equation which are a1 b1 we put them here a1 b1 and we mark the coefficients of variable x and variable y in equation 2 and we put them here a2 b2 and we multiply this we multiply this by a column that matrix which is x y how many rows are there one rows are there how many columns are there oh, sorry how, how many rows are there two rows are there one and two, two. and one how many column. columns one column are there and you know we can easily multiply these two because number of columns and of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix number of columns of uh, first matrix is equal to number of rows of the second matrix this is a recapitulation remember if you ask me why is it so you go to any mathematics book and uh, open the pages of matrix you will find that this rule is there this is the rule <clears throat> on the basis of which we can multiply the two matrices how do we multiply a1 into x plus b1 into y a1 into x plus b1 into y then a2 into x plus b2 into y in this manner we multiply and after that on the left hand side uh, this is the left hand side portion and the right hand side portion we have c1 c2 so we write in the column c1 c2 which is a two by one matrix and this is the matrix form of the system of equation if the number of rows the number of equations increase the number of rows will increase if the number of variables increase number of columns will increase and accordingly any system can be brought in its matrix form so matrix from form is also very much important in studying linear programming problem and why am i uh, discussing this two diverse side of uh, mathematics one is about straight line and another is about uh, matrix it is because linear programming problem linear programming problem which from now onwards we will shortly abbreviate as uh, lpp so lpp can be solved can be solved in two different ways in two different ways what are the ways how to solve lpp the first way is number one process step uh, procedure one is procedure one is called graphical method by which we solve them it is called graphical method and procedure two is called procedure two is called uh, simplex method 
it is called simplex method graphical method is graphical method and sim simplex method is an algebraic method but there are two ways by which we can solve the linear programming problem for graphical method the re recapitulation required where about straight line and region. That's why I discussed these two things because this idea is required for graphical method and for algebraic method, the recap required is matrix. And that's why I asked you whether you can uh, bring a system of equation into its matrix form or not. So these are the recapitulations that I wanted to discuss with you. I don't know whether you have enjoyed my today's class or not, but if I start, but I have not yet told you what linear programming is, problem is, what is the model of that? I have not discussed. In the next class, uh, the next class, the next time when I'll be taking the class, maybe, I don't know what, what will be the date. I will discuss, start discussing about how to model a linear programming problem from a physical system we'll consider very simple problems we'll model it we'll try to write it in a linear programming model and we'll then try to solve it either by graphical method or by simplex method whichever is applicable before i conclude my today's session if someone th is thinking that graphical method was uh, there uh, then what is the uh, what is the problem of, of, of if gra graphical method is there, why then we need a different method, simplex method, algebraic method? Uh, the answer, answer is very simple. You know that if there are two variables, two axes will be drawn. One is for X and another is for Y. And it will be a two dimensional, whatever curve you draw, straight Certainly line. You did what you are told. I am saying and that. X and y? I, I'm saying that uh, someone, someone may think that why there are two methods for solving a same linear programming problem. Why do we need two methods, graphical method and simplex method? It is because if you see that if there are two variables, X and Y, then we need to draw two X's, one for X, another for Y. And whatever curve you draw, in this case, the curve is a straight line. Whatever curve you draw, that curve is what? Is a two-dimensional figure. You can draw it in the page. On the, on the page, you can draw. If you are marking the region bounded by the straight line, it is there on the page. You can do it very well. But once I increase the number of variable to x, y, z, the two-dimensional figure will become a three-dimensional figure. Two-dimensional region will become a three-dimensional region. Then with some effort, maybe some sort of effort, putting some sort of vigorous effort we can, and with the help of mathematical softwares, we can easily identify, okay, this is the three-dimensional region and that is the three-dimensional region. What will happen if the system is having four variables? Then there will be four-dimensional figure. We'll not be able to do the do job works with four-dimensional figures. We cannot even imagine what for, what sort of figure will that be? If the number of variable is five, then it is a five dimensional figure. Then graphical method will automatically fail. So graphical method can suitably used only if the number of variable is restricted to two. But if the number of variable is more than that, we go for the simplex method. And hence, there are two methods to solve linear programming problem. This is my, these are my, the, the, uh, my introductions to the subject. And these are sir, the recap. Ha, bolo. Sir, I am like to net problem with you. Like to 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 be You to write it. You have to chat box. Ah, uh, uh, these are this is this was actually that I wanted to discuss with you in my introductory class. In the next class, we'll be discussing. We'll directly hit problems with linear programming problem, and we'll try to look at it. We'll try to formulate linear programming problem. Either we'll try to do it by graphical method. We'll try to solve it by graphical method if the number of variable is two, or if the number of variable is two or three, whatever, algebraic method can always be applied. 
So in the next class, we'll start solving how to do it. I will start solving how to uh, uh, program a linear programming, uh, lin linear model. Hello, sir. Sir, I have a question. Yes, yeah, sir. Bolo. Bolo. Sir, I will be able attend and attend this time. Why are you here, sir? I have written my name. I have written the chat box. I have written my role number, ID number. I have written my name, sir. You write uh, your ID underscore your name. Okay, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. Anybody, any question regarding the subject? Have you understood? All of you, can I uh, end my today's session? No, yes, no, sir. no, sir. Yes, sir. Just, just, no. Just I, my name and sir. Okay, well, you have written your name is uh, Shomojit Sufal Kundu. Anybody else? Shomo Shuriya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Shagota, sir. Shagota. Uh, I wrote my name. Wrote sir, Aratri Khajra, sir. Aratri Khajra. Sir, Aratri Khajra, Nandini Pramanik has written her name. Yes. Anybody who is remaining? 